we should be live. Welcome back everybody to another live stream repair. We've got four home pods that got uh, sent in today that need to get fixed up. Uh, first one with death farts and then three after that with no power. After that, if we've got the time, I'd like to try to mess around with the Wi-Fi chip on some logic boards in an attempt to replace uh, put up possibly a dead one on a customer's uh, home pod. So let's grab Pablo's and jump right on into this, yeah? <clears throat> Welcome, Stan. Putting up a fight. There we go. Hey, uh, let me make sure nobody's uh, stuck on the other stream there. I pre-scheduled this uh, stream last night on my phone and didn't realize that you could only actually start the stream from your phone uh, and you can't change that and so I didn't notice that until last minute when I was sitting down and getting set up so I was like oh shit I guess I'll just copy the stream from uh, onto another one and ooh, that's not good Let's see, did Pablo say anything about this? Uh, no. There's no, no damage to the box. Granted, they only sent it in the box. Huh. I'm a little afraid to plug it into power with stuff rattling around. I think we're going to skip uh, plugging it into power and go ahead and start opening this up so we can find the source of that rattling just to avoid damaging anything. Oh wow, did they already push 16.3.2 out? Oh yeah, I also got a uh, new multimeter. It's got a uh, USB and I can actually plug it into my computer and uh, give an overlay of the multimeter now. Not that one. Uh, here we go. That guy right there. So that's connected to our subwoofer on the desk here. So when you, you see me poke the subwoofer, you can see our, our uh, reading there jump up. But that, I can leave this a multimeter on all day, and it's not going to turn itself off or beep at me uh, incessantly. So, quite happy to have found that. And it was cheap too, it was only like $25. Showed up in a day. Oh, and actually, I'll go ahead and show you guys uh, what the whole UI for the multimeter looks like. It's, it's simple but it's useful. Uh, let's see, window capture, add existing. So this is what it looks like. You get this fun little analog di dial here on the bottom left and then you've got a graph of the reading over time along with a table uh, a live table also of the readings and then just a sort of like fake digital display maximum current time minimum readings that it's ever seen uh, yeah pretty pretty useful stuff here uh, just to be able to leave it plugged in here all day and not worry about killing the battery 
or uh, making sure that the camera can actually see it. Did that reset my freaking? Oh no, we just got a bunch of them up there. Let's delete that. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna have to uh, update all of mine and see if it improves anything because um, primarily I use my home pods just for air playing music to them and I don't notice a problem with that so far that continues to work just fine but f in my home app um, the majority of my home pods including the brand new models uh, often show no response and this isn't a problem that I had until the recent until the more recent uh, OS 16 updates so I'm not sure what's going on with that I've tried uh, hard resetting a few of them and that that worked for a few days and then the same problem came back the only annoyance is, is uh, since the whole map thinks they're not responding I can't manage my alarms on them anymore through the app None of those felt particularly loose, so it doesn't seem like anything's broken there. But I guess we'll find out here in a second. Usually this is where we see physical damage. Especially when we hear things rattling around. Huh. Nothing here. Oh, I think I know what that is. I'll take my guess now. I'll place money on this one. So inside, uh, the, you've got your tweeter speakers around the bottom here. And they're not just held in by these screws, but they're also held in by this plastic ring that goes around uh, the edge of them as well. This ring, we've seen love to come loose and uh, rattle around. You may not hear it when you're listening to a, a certain music at certain volumes, but it's there. So it's a pretty easy fix. We just uh, screw it back into place. Maybe give it a a little a little lick of glue to make sure it doesn't come undone again, or maybe try to bend the tabs in a little bit to keep it in place okay we're gonna add some rubbing alcohol to the outer inside of the basket here that'll make prying it up in the next step much easier get the screws out that one said goodbye oh, and there goes the bit <laughs> it's a Monday been a pretty good Monday all things considered we had a doctor's appointment to go to I was expecting horrible traffic but it only ended up taking 10 minutes to get there something that would with bad traffic probably take 30 to 45 minutes to get through 
And then uh, afterwards, we went to uh, Shaquille. And Neil apparently opened up a uh, chicken, like a fried chicken place. So we went over there and tried it out. And ooh, it's got to be like the best fried chicken I've had yet. Haven't had a whole lot, but ooh, it's, it was really good. I got the buffalo tenders. Buffalo's my favorite. And then uh, Kira got, I think, like Nashville. Like little Nashville chicken bits. Oh, in other news, uh, I applied for being a YouTube partner yesterday. And I woke up this morning to being approved. So we are officially a YouTube partner now which blows my mind. I never, I didn't think we'd, if we did, we wouldn't get here this fast. But thank all of you. That wouldn't be possible without you guys. <laughs> Vibration over time is probably the most likely cause for it coming loose. Um, uh, it's also possible that like just from the factory, they didn't put it in all the way, so it's always been like that. Not too sure. Let's inspect the subwoofer. If we take a nice close look inside, we want to take a really good look at this, especially because it's got death fart issues. That basically means that the amp is producing DC voltage and pumping it into the subwoofer here. Uh, that's why we've got the multimeter connected to our test bench subwoofer. Whenever we test our amplifiers after repairs, we want to see and make sure that it's not putting out, which this is a common problem. The filters on the amp go bad and they allow DC voltage through. And that's what uh, causes the death farts to trigger. Uh, the amplifier has that uh, it's it's built-in protection behavior. Uh, when the amp sees too much DC voltage, it forces a restart and plays that loud fart sound. So we want to see, because uh, that can kill the subwoofer. I can kill any speaker over time, at, uh, too much DC voltage. So we want to make sure that the voice coil looks good. Nice and evenly colored, still has a nice copper color to it. And then we want to gently push it straight in and out. That feels nice and smooth and it, it, it's, it's not making any strange sounds. And then the last and most important step out of the entire repair process for any issue when you're taking your home pot apart, you need to sniff the subwoofer. <laughs> smells good. If it smells burnt, it's, it's got a limited lifetime left. You might as well find another one to put it back together with. If we smell a suspicious subwoofer during our repairs, um, I offer people to replace it for them for an extra $20, and I'll give them the usual six, uh, six to 12 month warranty on that. Um, but if I sniff a suspicious subwoofer and they opt to continue using that suspicious subwoofer because they're feeling like saving a few bucks. I cannot guarantee that that subwoofer will last. I'm happy to put it back together with, with that one for you. Especially if you've got your own stash of woofers and you're happy to just replace it yourself. We get a lot of repairs in where people are totally comfortable taking these things apart themselves, but the, the board repair is where they stop and they're like, nah, never mind. And uh, so they just send, they usually just send the whole thing in for us to take care of it all anyways. Sometimes we get boards only, which uh, nice, nice, quick and easy. And it's good to see that other people are... Lots of other people are doing this too. All right, that one's gonna need big bubba. That one's good. 
Tony's here. It's time. Let's try not to wreck ourselves. We don't want another broken screw. <laughs> yeah. Got the power supply out. We're gonna disconnect the ribbon cable here that goes into the amplifier. And then we can remove the 14 screws holding this thing in place. Does anybody else like count the stairs as they're going up or down them? And like if you do, let's say you've got like multi-tier stairs like where you've got like five or ten of them and then it kind of like goes flat for like a few steps and then they go down again. Do you count those additional steps in the same like number or do you start over again? Uh, anyways, we are inside. We've gotten to where we need to be. We're going to power this amplifier up and of course connect it to our subwoofer here which is connected to our multimeter up on the screen and that's going to help us confirm uh, what we believe to be the source of those uh, the death fart behavior which is um, <clears throat> our filtering capacitors going bad on the back of the amp I almost forgot before we do that yep Retaining ring is loose. So we'll just <coughs> excuse me for a second. There we go. There we go. That's not going anywhere, but for posterity, we'll go ahead and push the tabs in. That is good. Oh yeah. <gasps> Very good. Let's continue here. You say 400 millivolts are up this time. Ooh, you're learning fast. You think 400 millivolts? We didn't get a chance to listen to it before we took it apart because we, we wanted to make sure of that rattle where it was coming from. So I'm not sure. I have no idea where to land my guess. I'm going to go ahead and say 189 millivolts on cold start. And then it'll, it'll of course, it'll probably rapidly grow. But I'm going to say the lowest we'll see is 100, about 180. Do you actually know where the power supply is safe to touch? Uh, yes. Anywhere around the edge where this plastic is, is safe to touch because of course it's plastic and it's, it's not going to con conduct anything up to a certain, a a anything becomes a conductor after a certain point, but nothing you're going to see come through this power supply, especially the caps here are going to come through the plastic. Safe to hold the power supply by the plastic pretty much is what I'm saying. I wouldn't suggest touching anything anywhere else. Don't do what I do. Unless you know what you're doing.
That's a pop. 800 millivolts. Oh my goodness. We're already at 900 millivolts. Oh, okay. Yeah, if I had heard that pop, I would have probably guessed like 600. So, let's get the filters replaced to remove as much of that offset as possible. And then, as with every HomePod that comes apart on our bench here, we're going to replace the shot key barrier diode on the amplifier. That's the part that loves to fail eventually and cause no power. Uh, granted, only certain date codes of these diodes are failing. This one has 1752K, so it's a little newer than what we see typically fail, but we're gonna replace it regardless. First things first though, let's get up close, get a little focused. and pull off our bad filters. So after our repairs here, we're hoping to see less than 50 millivolts, which is what most people in, in like the, the audio industry or whatever, when you Google around for DC offset, usually people agree on 50 millivolts being the, the maximum acceptable amount. So if we can get below that, which replacing these is, is usually the way to do it, we'll be golden. We're going to put some flux on here so we can apply a little bit of fresh, slightly lower melt solder. That's going to make it a little easier for us to put our new caps on there. And it's also going to put them through a little less uh, heat, which in, in my mind is going to give them a little better, a little longer lasting life. Okay, that'll do. Just a little more flux. We're gonna place our new caps on here. Without the hair, living with animals and now two other people with hair. Here we go. Could those caps be measured with a multimeter? Yes, they can. You, If your multimeter has a capacitance mode, you can read their reading. Uh, you can take their resistance, but from what I've seen, usually when these are going bad like this, they still appear to test fine uh, with those methods, which is why we just go straight into powering the board on and, and seeing how much uh, DC it's pumping out. 
to judge how bad the caps are because that seems to be the the both the quickest easiest and most effective way of testing these caps is is with them under load installed on the board um, every time I pull off these bad caps more often than not they they have the right capacitance and they read the same resistance as as good ones so it's one of those things that uh, seems to only fail under a certain load and I'm sure there's equipment or ways to test caps like these easily off the board, but it's easy enough to just test it with them on the board and check with the subwoofer plugged in and a multimeter on the subwoofer to see. And there's only four of them. I would replace all four of them at once. If you're trying to figure out which one of the four are bad, don't worry, don't, don't even bother. Just replace all four of them with uh, the same part. Uh, like the, a brand new capacitor with the same part, all, all four of them. Don't go mixing and matching them together because this is, you know, these are filters. You, you want to match them all up. If they're in series, I'm sure it won't matter as much. But if, if, if you've got two sets of caps, uh, each in series, but each, each cap pack is in parallel, then you might potentially throw things off there. So... Let's give this a test. We're going to pop on a power supply. Ooh, let me grab something. I'll be right back. I got this. Since you said uh, flux capacitor, that reminded me. Very excited to put this together and make a video on it. It won't be anything super special and other people have already made videos on them, but hey, nobody's done a video of it here on this table. So we're gonna do just that. Power supply is already on, so let's get a ribbon cable in so we can get a logic board on there as well. Subwoofer connected, logic board connected. Here we go. I totally forgot to replace the uh, shocky barrier diode on there, so we'll just make sure that it's got good DC offset and then we'll swap the diode out really quick before we put this back together. Give me the good stuff. Yes! Look at that. That is a beautiful result. Three millivolts. It's probably gonna settle a little around three to four millivolts. Beautiful. So before we had 800 millivolts and it was quickly growing. Now we've only got th about three and a half millivolts and it's holding much steadier there. So that means we've got the death farks fixed. Another subwoofer has been saved. Before we put this back together, again, we're just gonna replace our shock key barrier diode here to prevent the common no power issue. And then we'll put this back together. Put that into the used pile. 
one day soon we'll count all of the dead and used diodes we've got here and track all of the date codes here. All of the dead ones still have 1746 or 1748K on them. We haven't seen any of them come out with anything else yet. And uh, all of the used ones, there are some 1746 and 1748Ks in there, but the majority of these used ones are, in fact, other date codes. I wonder if one of the reasons maybe why Apple may not have done a recall for the no power issue is because maybe they just don't simply don't know which home pods were assembled with those bad diodes because not all first generation home pods have the bad diodes some of them have diodes with date codes far outside of the range that we think is that bad batch of them but if Apple had to recall them, then I, I if they don't know that, then they would have to recall every single HomePod just to be sure. So I think they just crossed their fingers hoping no one would make a big enough stink about it. People made a big enough stink about the iOS 14 dot whatever updates breaking HomePods and people people were getting checks cut out to them for that. Never got mine. Okay. Power diode has been replaced. We don't need to worry about retesting that. We know that that's good and it's not going to change anything. Plus, if we really somehow messed that up, then we'll find out once we test this again with it all the way put back together. Focus, focus, where'd you get that Ford Focus? Nice to see that all the screws are cooperating for once. Normally, I'm probably gonna jinx myself here, but normally they put up a fight. Wow. I think we're gonna get away with it. Amazing. Let's reconnect the ribbon cable down there. Make sure we push the connector down to lock it. 
It's a tricky little one. It looks like it's locked when it's not, and it looks like it's not when it's locked. I'll stick around till this one's finished. Hell yeah. Wow, this, this whole thing is just going back together like a dream. Get the doof woofer, drop it down. Oh, hey, Lynn. No worries. Also, welcome, welcome. Yeah, we're legit now. I fix it freaking shouting us out during the HomePod 2 teardown. YouTube approving our partnership. Wow, no problems. We'll make sure it doesn't r <laughs> rattle when we've got it all the way back together too. It's not the first time we've uh, had that show up here. We've had a few show up in the past where they rattle like that and that, that ring inside just comes loose. Or was loose from the factory, who knows. We also found just a straight up loose screw floating around the inside of a HomePod uh, from the factory a few live streams ago. That was... Hmm... Kind of surprised it didn't kill itself.
do the Google speakers even break? I'd have to see if they, can even, they even have like common issues and such. I'd be totally down. Let's do it. You stay there. Here we go, the last four screws. Yeah, that's, I've always wondered the same thing. How do they put those drawstrings together in the factory? Do they have a machine that winds them up? Or do they have somebody sitting there and by hand, like, putting that shit together? <laughs> Volume buttons look clear, so we're good to pop our top on. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised what they can automate in manufacturing. Manufacturing, after all, is like the biggest. Uh, what's the term? Bottleneck in a company typically making a bunch of money is being able to pump out a product and get it into customers' hands. In manufacturing is usually where they look to try to make as most efficient as possible. So if they can automate putting those strings together instead of having somebody sit there for upwards of a couple of minutes per HomePod to put that together and paying them to do that, well, you're good to go. Just like this HomePod. And just like today's sponsor, Mr. Brick, what do you have to say? Oh. Okay. I'm having trouble connecting. Sounds good. I'm having trouble. No, po no significant popping. If, if there was any popping, I couldn't hear it. And the volume buttons look nice and neat. So, S Pablo here is good to go. 
Let's put Pablo away. Say goodbye, Pablo. And who is up next? Let's look at our list. We've got Trip uh, with a classic case of no power. So that should be, let's see here. Update the text on our screen. Let's get you a uh, guy zoomed out. Nice. Here's Trip. Inside the box, of course, we've got HomePod. Never gonna get tired of seeing it. firmly grasp it that first time okay starting from the top as always we're gonna check our symptoms with a known good power cable we're gonna mash the top a few times and observe nothing happens if we look at our kilowatt meter it says we're pulling around four to six watts of power so that is usually what we see with this uh, no power issue when uh, the shot key barrier diode on the amplifier goes bad and prevents the whole thing from uh, turning on. That's the, uh, the same diode that we replaced at the end of Pablo's death farts repair. This is why we do it. Nice. Yeah, you thought you could, but you can't. Get out of here. A little bit of uh, alcohol to make the pry easier.
almost 3 a.m. Goodness. Yeah, get some sleep. Thanks for stopping by, mate. Nice and easy. Woofer check. Voice coil looks good. Feels nice and smooth. <laughs> Smells good. So that is a happy subwoofer. We're in. Round two. Our diode has a date code of 1746K, yet again. Who wants to bet? Yep, it's a dead diode. Let's get it replaced. Almost lost our cap there right next to it. Woo! 
the usual suspects are 1746 and 1748K. So week 46 and week, four, week 48 of 2017. No others, and we've seen hundreds of them by now. We keep all of them, just to keep track. Not a single one has broken that rule yet. And we can say that we've had at least 400 come through us by now. At least 400 diodes have been replaced whether they were working or not. And all of the bad ones were those date codes. some water really quick. What have we got? 150 millivolts. Oh, but it's holding there pretty steady. Yeah, I don't like that still. Oh, it's still at 150. Maybe our meter's acting weird. That's not fun. Yeah, see? What the heck? Hey, what are you doing? I gave it a bump with my foot and it seems to behave now. I think that's my only complaint. I noticed that is it like just magically finds DC voltage out of nowhere. Oh wow, I haven't had thunder in a while. Nice, nice, okay, three millivolts. We are very happy with that. So let's get this put back together. Let's try to blast through the rest of these repairs before we potentially lose our power and internet here.
What's it got? It's still got power. Talk to me. Say something. Anything. I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. Yeah, I know. I'm having trouble. I know. But everything looks good to go for a trip. <clears throat> Let's grab the next repair. That one is going to be... Grown, also with no power. Okay, starting from the top, update the text on our screen. Let's check our symptoms. Nothing on top, four to six watts at the wall. Probably the same diode as usual. Let's get it apart and find out. No, 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 no. You stay up here. There's a lot of hair on the floor down there you do not want.
subwoofer check. Looks good, feels good, smells good. Happy little subwoofer. Okay, if we get up close, we can see we've got another diode with 1748K on it. So that's the other diode, or that's the other date code that we see commonly fail on these boards. Let's confirm that it's dead with our beeper. Yep, it beeps, that means it's dead. Give it up. All good. Let's see if it works.
Here we go. And we've got power. Sounds like we've got good base and our offset's looking pretty at less than two millivolts. So let's get this put back together. And then we've only got one more for the day. Go for I'm gonna super glue this thing in. Oh my goodness. It's always this one too. There we go.
see what it's got. <clears throat> it's got power. And I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. Yeah, yeah. I'm having trouble. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Roan is ready to rock. With that, we've got one more to take care of from Stanley. Another no power. Let's get it opened up and taken care of. Duplicate shipping them, okay. Here we go. Let's check our symptoms. No response. Yet we're still pulling four to six watts of power. What could it be? What could it be? Three AM where you're at. Wow. Well, welcome to the chat. Good early morning to you. And good luck on your repair adventures. I'm glad we could help. No gotta start over. There we go.
Woofer check. Looks good. Feels good. <laughs> Smells good. It's gonna need the big one. That one too. That one was easy. And that one was easy. Whoa, boy. All right, got a broken screw. Completely ripped the head off that one. That one came out without a problem. So it looks like we're going to be doing a little bit of screw extraction here in a minute. Make things interesting to wrap up the night. Ooh, and it's in a bad spot too. I don't like that. Okay, first things first, we need to save that stud. Or rather, I think instead, we're just gonna rip the old stud out and replace it with a new one. Since uh, that screw right there is broken off, we're just gonna grab our Leatherman and try to peel the old stud off. Come on. Oh, I need vice grips for this. But they're not here. That's a pickle. Let's see. I had you're putting up a fight if I have another good amp which I do I might just replace the amp which I think we're gonna do cuz uh, I need my vice grips for that this ain't gonna cut it 
but basically what you would do is you'd get your vice grips and you would actually bite the back of the stud here and you can twist it to break it off the board without hurting the board and then get yourself a parts board and you can rip the stud off the old one and glue it or solder it onto your new board and you're good to go. But we came woefully unprepared. We don't have our vice grips. So instead, I've got another amplifier here that we're just going to replace the power diode on since it's got a original old diode on there. <clears throat> and just for curiosity's sake, let's go ahead and confirm that their original amplifier's fault was in fact the diode. It most certainly was. Okay, we'll put that to the side and fix that stud later. In the meantime, let's get this board ready to go. Very good. Let's just pop this together really quick after it cools down and make sure it's all still in good working order. What's it got? Still powers on, that's good. We'll see what our offset is and then we'll see if we can put it back together. Nice. We've got an offset of less than Oh wow, okay, four and a half, four millivolts. That looks pretty good. Let's get this put back together.
what time is it here? We are Pacific time zone, so it is currently 6.51 p.m. Also, welcome to the chat. Six fifty one AM damn exact twelve hour flip. Do you think the OG HomePods will stop getting software support? Oh yeah, sure, it's, it's inevitable. As with all things, it'll eventually lose software support. But I'm sure they'll continue to function as at least basic AirPlay 2 speakers, and perhaps even some uh, backward, or some, some somewhat compatibility with smart home stuff. <clears throat> but I'm sure the, the time is coming within the next few years where they'll stop uh, updating the software on the first gen HomePods. They'll still work the way that they did as before. But then at some point, I'm sure they'll come out with some brand new feature that like breaks backwards compatibility and like your home architecture needs to be updated again and all the old stuff won't work anymore you'll still be able to again set it up probably and use it as an airplay speaker The woofer, the whole HomePod is completely enclosed. It's not ported. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no ports here. Completely sealed. It's a got. It's got power. I see you. I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. I'm having trouble con All right. Stanley checks out. And with that, we've got everything that we needed to fixed up today. If you have any questions about any of the repairs that we've done here, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you're looking for more information on repairing your HomePod or my contact info to get it fixed for you, check out my website, nixfix.com. 
There's a dedicated section for common issues and uh, my mail-in address as well as uh, international repair services for uh, you folks uh, across the pond, as some would call it. Uh, in, a, uh, in any case, I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye!